Hello again, and welcome to the second part of the modeling for the Colossal Titan. I have decided to not be too like direct with all the speech or throughout this video because it's a pretty straightforward process. I have already blocked out most of the details, so as you are able to see here uh, in this video is that I'm just fine-tuning them, like looking at some things that didn't work out, changing them, reshaping them, whatever, adding some more flesh or cutting away some bone, it's just, yeah, you'll see under the way that, uh, or under the process that there is a lot of work, but not as much as before.
So when the jaw was finally fixed and even out a little bit more and looking a little more symmetrical, I decided to go back to the teeth because they were so incredibly flat and not realistic at all. And the way that I decided that I would fix the teeth was masking them out or with the bone and coloring them and then I would start to just get rid of the old details so I would have a fresh start but I would still have this shape right there. Uh, and I decided that I would work a little better on the line in between the teeth to add variety so it wasn't actually just a straight line as much as my unsteady hand could make of course. Um, so I added more detail, smoothed it, added more detail, smoothed it, and you know the process.
since I decided to do more like digging, some extra fine details on the skeleton side, and uh, that was when I realized that I probably should start thinking about how I want to do the muscle, because everything with the model was pretty much done. I had finished teeth, the bone was, I was pretty satisfied with how the bones were, but I had no plan, since obviously this is the first time I've ever done this, on how to do the muscle. I had an idea that I would find a brush that could do it for me, because I do love finding custom brushes that just do bigger details for you, so that you don't have to like do every single stroke on your own, and when you look at the Colossal Titan's muscles, you can see that they have these kind of like bumps. Uh, or lines if you want to call them that. So I decided to do some research on different brushes and actually just looking at the clay buildup, I was pretty happy about how uh, the roughness of the brush just added texture to the muscle. But the problem was that it added a lot more clay than I needed and it wasn't uniform, then it had these like square kind of dents in them and it just it it worked, but it also didn't work. So I decided to do some research and I found this brush um, online that actually was supposed to do cloth folds. So obviously not meant for muscles, but the great thing about the brush is that compared to the standard brush, which is what it actually kind of well, looked like, uh, was that it had like this slow-mo. That reminded me a lot of uh, stability brush or stability settings for a brush uh, in digital painting so it, it just instead of getting the strokes right away it kind of came in afterwards so you had more control over where the brush would go and leave the trail and i found that that was a lot easier and a lot more effective than using the standard brush so i decided to make a lot of lines over the uh, muscle and use the pattern after the manga version and the anime version of the model that I'm modeling for and that worked pretty well. I'm pretty satisfied with the brush because it had the stability setting and I'm sure you can add that to other brushes too but I just I haven't really thought about it before I found that brush and uh, yeah that's the one that I have decided that if I ever do the whole body, I will definitely use the, the same brush again just for the muscles. And before someone points it out, yes, I could do it in the texturing process, but the thing is that you only can get that much detail, and since this is going to be a close-up view of the model, it is best if you get that kind of detail in the sculpting process while you have the chance, because the texture like, the closer you are to the model, the more you'll realize when you look to such models and you know what you're looking for, you'll see what is textured and what is modeled. And I could also just save that for texturing because I felt too lazy to actually sculpt every single strand of muscle, you could say. Um, but the thing is that we're gonna bake this into an alpha map anyway, so I would have to do this at one point. And what better time is it to do when you have the best chance at it? Like usually when you need these kind of details uh, and you have to do it in the texturing process, you do that because you have forgotten to do it earlier or you just don't want to go all the way back uh, from you mapping to the sculpting process. And as I said before, I was quite satisfied about uh, the result. Like it pretty much delivered on everything and I had quite the control over the brush and I could like feel or like lead the brush wherever I needed it to, I could do it in whatever direction and it didn't look flat at all which is the point. <laughs> and uh, once I was satisfied with the muscle I went over the model again and decided to use the damn standard brush to fix the edges where uh, the muscle and the bone met, so that you could see a clear separation of the two. Because at that point I smoothed it a lot, so it didn't actually look like there was a separation. Like, at one point it kind of looked like it was, like, the only thing that would be the difference would be in the texturing process, where I would see that the color is different and that would be it. 
but I also wanted the details of the model to look like I had like spent a lot more time, thought it through, and separated the different groups of the model. Then finally what I did was fix the jaw a little bit because it felt like it was quite far down compared to the picture and I've noticed this uh, way too late. Like I can still fix it with the move tool but when I looked at the picture of Berthold when like the realistic version of him, not the one that I'm going for, you can see that his jaw is almost like on the same level as his chin. and. I didn't think about this because when I used the uh, Seabush model from the beginning, the one that they offered, well offered and offered, <laughs> um, I didn't notice this because usually men have this like, they have very sharp jaws but they don't have it flat like Berthold does. It's just a, kind of a part of his characteristics as a titan. And um, yes, it was a little too late to fix this, but I tried and I have decided that if I ever go back to it, I will make the jaw a lot longer down. Because another characteristic with the Colossal Titan and Berthold is that because Berthold has such a long face, his jaw or his titan form is also pretty long face. But all that detailing is for another time. I am definitely going to do a... Uh, video in the future where I fixed my previous projects but I don't find the fixing it right when you see the problems if it's such like a late problem that you notice it's it's not a good idea to fix them right then and there because there might be other things that you want to fix later on that you didn't notice in that moment and instead it's better to just step back take a week off if that's how long you can take <laughs> by not fixing it or a month or even a year and then come back to it and see how much you've improved so that is my plan for this video and uh honestly I don't have too much left here there's a little more touch up and after that the whole sculpture is done the next part for this video though is converting it to Maya or exporting it as it's called sorry um and to do that I will have to fix a few things and that is where I almost gave up on this whole project because I couldn't figure it out but luckily I didn't and I'm pretty satisfied with how it went so until next time